Hey guys, so today I am finally starting to scape my new 80 liter slash 21 gallon tank. I talked a little bit about this tank in a previous video. If you're interested, check it out. And as you can see, it's kind of empty. I just placed the soil. And as usual, I'm using the Tropica Aqua Soil, which is what I have available in my area and I really, really like. I will add more, but I wanted to start with a pretty thin layer just to arrange my decorations so that I don't scratch the glass. And now comes the fun slash kind of frustrating part for me, arranging the hardscape. I can take hours arranging the stuff. Might as well film a little bit the process. And I'm gonna try something new today. I'm gonna try the dark start, which implies arranging everything hardscape and soil into your tank, including filtration, minus plants. And as the name suggests, cycling the tank and going through the process of nutrient leaching without plants, without light, practically limiting algae. So that's what I'm gonna do because I do not have plants at the moment. They're not available. So it might take a while until they come in stock. Might as well try the dark start, right? So, I have to be honest, I don't know what to do in this tank. I have some dragon stone, I have a few pieces of wood that I don't particularly like, but maybe I can do a combination of the two, I don't know. I'm gonna play around with what I have, and I'm gonna show you, at some point, what I settle upon. So let's, let's just get started. Alright, so I played around a little bit with the hardscape that I currently have and I'm gonna sleep on it just a little bit. I'm gonna go to the pet shops these days and see if I can have some better pieces of wood. I feel the need of more branches on this side, but I'm very limited when it comes to the supplies here. So you know what? For now I'm gonna let it be like this and just spend some time with it and we'll see how I feel about it in a few days. Definitely need more soil in the back so the whole thing will be slightly more raised than this. But for now, you know, the idea of an island is not bad. I actually have another type of island tank, let's say, with a bonsai tree in the middle and I have to say I really do like that empty space in the back there considering these are pretty much all of the supplies I have at the moment, you know. I came up with a decent idea. We'll see about it though. I'm gonna pick this up in a little while. For you it's gonna be a few seconds, for me it might be weeks, I don't know. So see you in a little bit. And hello again, a few days have passed and I went to the pet shops, didn't find much hardscape to play around with so I just rearranged a little bit my pieces of wood and the rocks and I think I'm gonna go with this scape. I think I'm gonna go for an island look really because I have an aquarium lamp that I want to reuse and it's not 60 centimeters, it's 45. So if I can concentrate the light in the middle and not so much on the sides that would be great with the light that I already have and I don't need to purchase new one. So I added a little bit more soil as you can see, I might have to add just a little bit more. I see some parts that are slightly shallow and I would like them to be a little thicker, but that's gonna take a few minutes. And also this type of wood actually doesn't float, which is nice. But I always like to test it first because I had surprises and this one, even though it sinks, it doesn't really super sink. I mean, if I touch it a little bit, it's gonna wobble a little bit in the water. So I don't want surprises, which is why I glued it to the rock. The way that I glue stuff is with cotton balls or pieces of cotton that I wedge in between the wood and the rock or wherever the two things that I wanna glue meet. And then I pour liquid super glue on them. It is a technique that everybody, almost everybody in aquascaping uses. I use it all the time. It's absolutely safe for fish and aquatic life in general. So in this way, I make sure that the wood doesn't really wobble around in the aquarium, even though it's not really floating. It's slightly buoyant, I guess, <laughs> let's put it like that, until it soaks in more water. It's a good idea for it to stay attached to the rocks. Right, so as I was saying at the beginning, I wanna try the dark start with this aquarium. Partly because I'm curious and it makes sense to let the soil leach whatever it has to leach without having plants and light, without having an abundance of algae, right? That That's cool. But also because I don't have all the plants that I need at the moment. I purchased a few. If I get them in these one to grow cups and 
you know, the equivalent in vitro whatever other brands have, I find that they do last quite a bit more than if I have the pots. The pots always get full of algae if I put them in containers. I can keep these like this for three, four weeks without any type of problem. So maybe for a week or so I can keep the tank unplanted in the dark with water changes until I cycle it. So what I'm gonna do next is play around with a little bit more soil here and there, place the filter, add the water, shut down the light, add my bacteria, all that you know you have to do at the beginning, but all of it without plants. So here goes nothing. Alright, so I did something since I decided that, yeah, I'm gonna make this an island scape. I sloped the soil in the middle like this rather than having it uniformly all around. So it is shorter or thinner in the front, it goes up in the back, but do you see on the sides it actually slopes down? Yeah, I wanna create this hill idea, this island kind of idea which will not be an island we're not gonna have sea here we're not gonna have decorative sand or anything but i will have foreground plants very tiny um lawn plant you know in romanian we call them lawn plants or something or i used to 20 years ago but yeah anyway that's why it's a little bit sloped and i will put a little bit more soil in the back to create even more of a slope there a little hill there in the middle and also i installed the internal filter oh no internal filters and aquascaping yes you guys i like internal filters for now I might change my mind in the future. For now though, they're so easy to maintain, which is what I need in my life <laughs> right now. I can overlook the fact that it's inside. I'm gonna have a black background, most probably. It's not even gonna be visible, to be honest. Uh, for now though, it is what it is. I don't want an external filter because I don't have anywhere to put it under the aquarium. I could buy like a hang-on or something. I, I don't wanna go through that. There are things that I don't like about those. I'm not gonna get into all the reasoning i might do a separate video but yeah for now internal filters we gotta just accept it <laughs> and who knows maybe in the future i will have an external one that i can put next to the tank we'll see for now it's internal and that is that Alrighty, so i'm gonna put a little bit more soil and i think it is time to put the water turn on the filter and let it run Alrighty guys, so it has been a lot, three weeks, four weeks, something of the sorts and finally plants have come in stock and I got some plants, hopefully I have enough for this tank as well. It is time to plant it. Up until now I cycled it, it is stable, it is cycled but since I didn't have any animals in, you can see the wood um, looks funky. It has that biofilm that is absolutely harmless in my opinion to fish and snails and shrimps and actually they love to munch on it. So let's plant it today, maybe add a few shrimps to take care of that biofilm, they will love it and then at a later date, add the fishies in as well. I will have to tell you, I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave that background be because this tank is a little, not underlit, but it has quite a tiny light fixture and I could use some more light. So if I remove the black background, I'm gonna have the white wall, it might look better. And I want to move this background here in my Dutch because I do believe it's gonna look a little better. I think Dutch aquascapes look better with a dark background. And this one being more of an island setup, which I don't know if it's gonna stay an island. <laughs> I never end up following the initial plan. We'll see what it ends up being. I think I'm gonna remove it and let it be with a white background just to have a little bit more light for the plants. It will also have CO2 from that bottle there. So first off, let's drain as much as possible to have an easier time planting the plants. And then I'll get back to more blabbing. Thank you. 
Oh, right. So here we are a week and a half or something later. And yeah, uh, there are some changes. No more internal filter. <laughs> I also have a skimmer. Yeah, changes. It's related to a different tank, but I remembered I had a blau somewhat external filter, hang on slash external filter, because I got another Denerle one, which happens to be the same one. We'll make an entire video about it. It's so funny. And I tried it out to see how loud it is and it's super quiet. So I'm so happy, no more internal filter. I'm sure some of you will rejoice. Anyway, the plants have started to take off and they're looking spectacular. I love, I love, love, love the plants that I managed to find. By the way, most of them are coming from Tropica or Denerly slash a supplier that I don't really know. I cannot focus. There you go. It's this guy over here. Stoffelsinternational.com. It might actually be a supplier for multiple brands, but most of the plants, with just a few exceptions, you can find at Tropica and Denerle, which are the two main providers, I would say, in the European Union, and maybe not only. Okay, a few thoughts about the dark start. I would not do it again if I would have to use wood upon which I decided to attach some moss because this time I used glue for everything, for the Bucephalandra, for the mosses, and I'm actually not a fan at all of gluing moss to wood because that residue is an eyesore and it's not really all that easy to remove. You really need to scrub the wood. And as you can see, the moss melted off a little bit, so now it looks horrifying. It will grow back. I might top it off with some more moss that I have. I wasn't expecting it to melt off, but it did. I think it's the only plant that kind of melted. Other than that, everything looks very, very nice. I'm running CO2 again from my Blau CO2 system and recently I purchased a surface skimmer because it's a new product from Blau. It's very affordable and yeah, might as well use it because I did have that biofilm on top and I did not have a skimmer placed on an intake of a filter or things of the sort. So I decided to try it out and I'm very happy with it. Maybe I'll do a review 
at some point. I know I need to change its location to the other side, just so we have the flow circulating in the same direction. Right now we have some conflicting information like this from both sides, but it's okay, I'm gonna fix it. And you might also see a little fish inside. Yeah, he's the sole survivor of the green rosboras, which are so beautiful. I love green rosboras and I want more, but I don't know what happened with the batch that I got. They kind of one by one uh, kind of withered off, if you know what I mean, and I don't know why. I moved him from the 40 liter bonsai aquascape. I moved him here because he has more space and soon enough he will reunite with some other fishies. My ember tetras, which are indestructible. Those fish are so, so hardy and I'm sure he will enjoy the company. I didn't find any more green rosboras for sale right now, but I will get him a few friends. But he's happy, the tank is already cycled. So from this point of view, it was nice that I didn't have to wait all that long. I didn't have the spike of ammonia anymore, but planting the plants in wet soil, not my favorite thing to be fully honest. I prefer to plant them in dry soil. And also the thing with the wood, yeah, I would not do it again, let's say for a Dutch style, absolutely not. I'm just, I would just go ahead and plant it when it's dry. But it was an experience and it worked because I didn't have the plants and it saved me cycling time. I can go ahead and actually put the fish in because everything is cycled, everything is stable. It's a little bare though, so I think I'm gonna wait before transitioning them from the smaller tank to this one. They might freak out because they're coming from a heavily planted tank to this. So I'm gonna wait a little more, but other than that, I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'll keep you up to date. I'll put updates below in a pinned comment as they come. So if there's any update, check the pin comment. Alrighty then, so before I let you go, I will list the equipment that I'm using down below in the description, even though I didn't mention it throughout the video. I think it's better to have it written as well. I'm not gonna link you because I purchased them from Cyprus. How many of you live in Cyprus? 0 0.5. <laughs> so just search for them if you want on Amazon or your favorite aquatic store and see if they have them in stock. And if you want reviews on anything, let me know. I will do some reviews on the filter. It's so funny, the Blau 360 and the Denerly Scaper Slow, in my opinion, same filter, different accessories, works the same. Both have quirks, so it's fun to discuss about that in a video. Righty, let's end it here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the scape. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!